Welcome to Biblical Foundations for Africa, an in-depth look at the Bible as we learn how to discover God for ourselves as Christians in Africa. Join the Biblical Foundations team as they lead you through this exciting journey through the Bible. Let's get started. Moeni, that's a closer greeting from South Africa and welcome back once again to Biblical Foundations for Africa coming to you from Johannesburg in South Africa. You know, we exist to encourage every single African Christian to read, to believe and to understand the Bible for themselves and then to go out into every single sphere of our society and make Jesus Christ glorious. My name is Norma and you can consider me your very happy companion in exploring the treasures of God's word. Today we're continuing with part four of a series of foundation building devotions called What's Wrong with the World? In the first session we learned that we live in a broken world because of original sin which is the fallen nature that we inherited from Adam, our forefather. In the second session, we talked about the three words that we find in the Bible that describe our fallen and rebellious nature. These three words are sin, iniquity, and transgression. In the third session, we found out that the devil, who is the prince of this world, tries to hook us and enslave us to sin through the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Today we will learn that our fallen nature causes us to become idolaters or idol worshippers. You may find that strange. Perhaps you've never thought about it. Maybe you're saying to yourself, but I don't bow down and worship before statues or carvings or images of any kind. Well, that's definitely one type of idol that we're told about in the Old Testament. But these visible idols are not the only idols. There are many idols in the world, some of which we can see with our eyes and many that we can't see with our eyes at all. So today as we ask the question, what's wrong with the world? Let's look at three ways in which the Bible explains this problem of our fallen nature, which is called idolatry. So the first point is that idolatry is anything we worship in the place of God. Actually, an idol is anything that takes the place of God in our lives. Tim Keller puts it like this. It is anything more important to you than God, anything that absorbs your heart and imagination more than God, anything you seek to give you what only God can give you. In Exodus 20 verse 3, God commanded his people by saying, You shall have no other gods before me. He said this just after the Israelites had come out of Egypt, which was full of different gods and different types of gods. The Egyptians literally had gods and goddesses for everything. They believed in sun gods and moon gods, gods that provided protection and gods that provided fertility. They even believed in gods of death and chaos. You see, the Egyptians believed that their many different gods could provide for them everything that their hearts desired. But these were all false hopes because these gods were not true gods. They were false gods. In modern times, we may not subscribe to the same belief as the Egyptians. But money, cars, possessions, children, boyfriends, jobs, clothes, houses, any of these things can become idols to us when we start investing our trust, our hopes, our attention, our love on these false gods more than we place it on the true God. If you go back to our series called Who Are You God? You'll remember that it is the God of the Bible who is the protector, the provider, and the giver of all things. Therefore, he is the true God and he must be first in all of our lives. My idols may be different from your idols, but because we are all fallen sinners, we definitely each have an idol. Things that we love, that we trust, that we desire, or that we seek more than we seek God. I don't think that anyone can truthfully say that they don't have any idols. So the first thing about idolatry is that it's about worshipping, trusting, believing or desiring 
anything else in the place of God. The second point is that idolatry begins in the heart. The sin of idolatry actually starts inside our hearts, not outside ourselves. You see, we are not sinners because of the sinful things we do. We do sinful things because we are sinners. In other words, we do what we are. Proverbs 4 verse 23 warns us sternly that above all things we should guard our hearts because out of the heart flow the issues of life. All the issues of life, including the things that come out of our mouths and the things that we do with our hands. Up until Jesus began to teach these things, people thought that the sins that counted were the ones that people could see or the sins that were actually committed on the outside. They thought that actually committing adultery, eating forbidden fruits, and committing murder, that these were the sins that mattered. But Jesus pointed out that before these sins become a reality, they actually start with thoughts and ideas in our hearts. They start as small thoughts and eventually evolve into more significant actions. So a sinful, idolatrous heart is the real problem, not just the actions themselves. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. He says, For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. The crazy thing is that because of our fleshly nature, just as soon as we get rid of one idol, our sinful hearts get to work making another one. Our hearts are virtual idol-making factories, so they say. They take very good things and they make them into God things. And without the grace of God, they do this from the time that we are born until the time that we die. We need Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit to set us free from our propensity toward idolatry. So the second point is that idolatry begins in our hearts. Third and finally, idolatry means believing a lie. At the source of all idolatry sits a lie. The root of idolatry is a deceptive and lying thought that comes from the pit of hell. In the Garden of Eden, Genesis chapter 3, the devil came to the woman as a deceiving serpent and the idol that he held out before the woman was that there was a possibility that by eating the forbidden fruit, she and her husband would become gods in their own right. They would become self-determining, self-sustaining, all-knowing, all-wise beings just like the true God who had created them. Instead of depending on God for everything, they would become self-determining. That was the lie. And the woman fell for it. She believed the lie that it was possible for them to become self-determining. She believed that she could become a god. This became her idol. Of course, this was a lie and it led to all sorts of disastrous consequences for everyone ever since then. What lie have you believed that has led you into idolatry? Have you ever thought that eating more will satisfy the hunger that's actually in your soul? Have you thought that getting into a new romantic relationship will fill the emptiness in your heart? Have you ever thought that making more money, buying new things or achieving a particular business deal will make you happier? At the end of the day, these things become idols and at the root of our idolatry are the lies of Satan, which tell us that these false gods can satisfy us more than Jesus can. So the third and final point is that idolatry ultimately means believing a lie. So today we've learned that what's wrong with the world is that every single human being is an idolater. We have learned that idolatry means worshipping anything other than the true God. Secondly, we've learned that idolatry actually begins in our hearts. And third and finally, we've learned that idolatry is born out of believing Satan's lies that we can get satisfaction from things other than from God. Once again, this propensity toward idolatry is not something that we can release ourselves from. We need divine assistance, otherwise we'll forever be running from one idol to another. Why don't we cry out to our Father and ask Him to change our lives 
from the inside out. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your written word in the form of the Bible. Lord, your word tells me that my fallen nature makes me an idolater, and yet your law commands that I should worship you and you alone. Forgive me, Lord, for the times and ways in which I've worshipped anything or anyone apart from you. Change my heart, O God, and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Join us again next time right here at Biblical Foundations for Africa as we continue the series called What's Wrong with the World? Check out our website for more resources that will help you with any further questions that you might have. Go on and chat to us on any of our social media channels. Be blessed and remember as you go out today to make Jesus glorious. Thank you for joining us today on our Biblical Foundations for Africa lesson. To find out more information, join us on our website www.biblicalfoundationsafrica.com Also, we'd love to have you as our friend on our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. See you next time.